Welcome to Winnie in the Shadows. Andy and Jim, we're going to break down UFC fight night. Well, fight day. Uh, San Diego, is, <laughs> it, is it though? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, where our bonuses are going to stay the same. Uh, our payout bonuses, Jim, are going to stay the same. Uh, that has been... <laughs> been very carefully documented and we are not going to be cutting uh any of our fighters um who are undefeated so uh what we, we're, we're actually going to talk about dana white here at the end of the end of, I, I i i like a lot of the things he does i don't like a lot of some of the things that he does but i think it's i think it's pretty polarizing so we'll go over some of that but we're going to go fight by fight and break it down here so we got to start with Cedric dumas dennis Tolulin. uh if you're betting on this fight you're betting on somebody that you're not very confident in, Jim. So which one of these fighters that you're not very confident in are we going to be betting on? Well, I can't bet on the walking concussion of Dennis Tullin. Amen. I just can't. I just can't. Uh, the guy is a knockout waiting to happen. He just is. Um, I don't like Dumas. I don't like his attitude. I don't like anything about the guy. You can say that he's a good athlete. I don't think he's got great cardio. I don't think he's got great wrestling. I don't think any of that's going to matter in this fight. It just He's fighting Dennis Tolulin. This is a loser leaves town match. This goes back to the UFC clearing out their roster, again, which we'll get to at the end. Uh, but this is a roster clear-out fight. Whichever one of these guys loses, I think, is, is shown their walking papers. You think Dumas... He, what you think Dubas gets his walking papers if he loses? Really? I just don't think that people are very high on him, and we just saw this with Makayev when it comes to attitude. <laughs> the guy does not have the best attitude. He's not the smartest uh, person out there. I'm not surprised if we see a cut, man. I'm really not. To Lulin, most certainly. If he loses, he is absolutely done. Um, this fight, not to go the distance, I think could be very interesting if you don't want to pick a side. So I know, I believe we're at a one and a half line right now. Um, I would be very interested in the under two and a half as a parlay piece. I think somebody slips on a banana peel in this fight. Yeah, let me pull up here the lines that we have as of, uh, as of yeah, today. We, we have a one and a half at, at uh, 140. Yeah, so it's Tuesday evening when we're recording this. So yeah, these lines, uh, they may adjust, may not, but yeah. Under one and a half plus one forty over minus one eighty. Those are the lines that we're kind of looking mm -hmm. at. I don't point. like the one and a half. If, if I, I don't I would, either, I would like to play the two and a half or no distance at some point. I just think Tulun's just so ripe to be knocked out. He always is. I'm with you. Uh, I went back and watched the Dumas, the very short Dumas uh, Rosaboya fight. So I, I thought it kind of interesting. Like that one was controversial. He clearly got poked in the eye, um, mm -hmm. but. Up until that point, Rizzo Boya was landing punches, but I got to say, Tomas was eating him really well, wasn't bloodied up, wasn't rocked or anything, and that's what Dennis Tolulin is going to have to do, is just going to have to piece him up on the feet because his ground game is non-existent. Like, it's, it's, it's really bad. Maybe he's, maybe he's got a first-round KO in him, but I'm with you that – you know, you, you you just get scared when you're laying this kind of juice on someone like Dumas, but when you're fighting Dennis to Lulin, yeah, this is what the setup yeah. is. It's Dumas to win. Probably unders are the way to go. Um, that's probably the best parlay piece. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be nervous about parlaying Dumas. I think to Lulin's completely done. Um, yeah, I don't this. think there's much left for that guy. No, not not much left than Tech. He's got. He's got some decent striking when you get in the clinch, but Dumas, if he gets on the ground, it's Dumas all day, uh, which I never thought I would say. But it's it's the, a crazy thought, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it's it goes really. You know, Tolulin's also like a turtle in there. He's very very slow, so the athleticism is going to be a huge advantage uh, for Dumas. Jai Herbert and Rolando Bedoya. Bedoya has the big like. Fight's great against Chaos Williams and then just doesn't look good in the second one. Where are you going with this fight? I can't bet on Jai Herbert in, in 2024. I just can't. Um, down a weight class for Bedoya. Interesting to see how he's going to look at this weight class. Um, I'm interested. Not interested with my wallet, that's for sure. I don't think there's a bet on this. Uh, I'd be interested in this fight to go the distance, actually. More so than taking a side. I'm, I'm very focused on totals um, this week. I think there's some really good totals that you can parlay together 
uh, buying around here or there if you get a one and a half or a two and a half and still get some really playable numbers. So, um, you know, Jai Herbert, yeah, he was knocked out by Taporia. I, I don't see the the dynamic striking of Bedoya uh, getting to Jai Herbert. But we have seen Jai Herbert struggle with grappling against the fence, control time, and Bedoya is going to come forward um, and probably get Jai's back up against the fence. So I think this is going to end up being a sloppy fight where we get down to a split decision. So I'll take the over two and a half in this. You and I didn't even talk about this one, but this is one of my favorite overs. Um, I went back and watched Bedoya's last couple fights. What do we What do we say about guys? I have being tough. If that's your mm-hmm. best thing, so I watched him against Kanan Song. I I'm not a hundred percent sure he lost that fight, but he was tired in the mm-hmm. last round, and I'm not really sure what he does great. Um, I've watched him against Chaos Williams, and you get this, you know, Bedoya's, he was like, oh, the, the, the short notice fight. Oh, he went toe-to-toe with Chaos mm-hmm. Williams. When you go back and look at it, it was I, it was absolutely Chaos taking his foot off the gas and, t- and underestimating this guy. And then losing decision to Kanan Song, and when I watched both those fights, I just didn't see the upside. I'm, I'm like, okay, what what's his big advantage on offense? I don't see it. Yeah, he's, um, he's very vanilla on offense. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. is, is he known as a big-time grappler? No. Did he show big knockout power? No. So then I look at Jai Herbert, and to me this screams Jai Herbert puts on, like, a veteran performance and takes it to the scorecards in, like, a 30-27 fashion over, like, Bedoya. So I was with you 100% that I was surprised that this over 2.5 is less mm-hmm. than minus 200. I, th- I think this is a steal. Because I'm not sure Jai Herbert finishes Bedoya. That's one thing about Bedoya. Oh, he's tough. Yeah. He's not, he doesn't get submitted. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, he went the distance against Song and Williams. To me, this is just like the ultimate over. Because you're looking at Jai Herbert and you're going, well, he's not going to finish somebody like. <laughs> like no, he's know. a decisionator, too. He is a decisionator. Yeah. He, um, he knocked at this out point combo career, worthy. Whoop D. Like, like yeah. But decision against, you know, Klein. Uh, decision against Nelson, decision against uh, Ziam, and then yeah, mm-hmm. getting knocked out by Toporia. Nobody's going to think think less of you from that. I think it's Jai Herbert by decision. But if you're if if we're just talking about like what's the one bet you want on this one? Oh man, over at minus one eighty, yeah, all day, all day mm-hmm. for that one. So Victoria Dudikova, Sam Hughes, uh, we um, ladies and gentlemen, we missed out on. Victoria Dudakova against Melissa Gatto was like buying Bitcoin at, 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 at when it was at eight dollars. Victoria oh. Dudakova was going to get worked, absolutely <laughs> starched and worked, and we lost that fight. And she comes back, and what do you know? She's a big time favorite. I know where you're going with this one, Jim. Sam Hughes plus money has to be the play, right? I love Sam Hughes. I, I do. do. I love Sam Hughes. As a fighter, as a fighter, I love Sam Hughes. At least she brings the fight. Okay, she brings the fight. This girl, <laughs> if she's got 100% to give, she's going to give you 120. If she's got nothing left in the tank, guess what? There's more in that tank. She will keep on fighting. Um, I was telling Andy, one thing I love to look at with Sam Hughes is round two and round three. If I believe she has a cardio advantage and a dog advantage, then I am looking at her in round two and round three. I'm looking at betting on her live because Sam will lose round one pretty consistently. It's very rare that she comes out and looks good in the first round. But where she excels is when the fight starts to slow down, when the athleticism or her opponent goes away and they are at an even playing field. The more heart in the fight, that's what wins her fights. And she's got heart for days. Um, I think Dudikova could look good early, probably gets a takedown. But cardio-wise, Sam Hughes all day. Skill, round, well-rounded skill-wise, Sam's got great submission defense. So I, I would not be shocked to see Dudikova get a takedown, try to hunt for the back and blow her gas tank out in round one, and then it's going to be all Sam Hughes from there. Then, it, then to me, it's a question whether or not Dudikova can see the judges at that point. Because I, I, I do believe in this fight, Sam will be very live in round three for a finish. Very live. So I loved the number on Sam Hughes. We're starting to see money come in on her. 
I think people are seeing what, what we're seeing. Um, give me Sam Hughes at plus money. That's the rule. It's Sam at plus money, and you just keep betting it. <laughs> she's always plus money, and she's, you know, she's three and two. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, lost to uh, Yasmin Wari, who we were very love, high on. Love her, yeah. Yeah, love her. Um, lost to Pierre Rodriguez. That wasn't great, but love what she did against Morum. Uh, Lise Reed, she does get the finish. Um, Stella Nunez. And, like, this 8-0, man, like, we, this is one of our – this is kind of becoming one of our better – betting theories we we've really implemented the fighting nerds mm-hmm. uh betting theory but we gotta it, like these these fighters that are undefeated where you can poke holes in these yeah. undefeated records there's another one on this card that i might be able to poke some holes on but okay eight no great great it, but look who she's fighting oh and oh one and oh mm-hmm. four, you know um maria silva goes to decision on contender series that's never a good look she gets Credited with a, with a win because Estela Nunez puts her arm down, discuts her elbow. She gets taken down by Jean Frey in the first round. That's mm-hmm. a terrible look, and she was completely gassed in the third round. Completely gassed. I there's also something. There's another. There's another guy on this card who reminds me a lot of Victoria Dudikova. Where I watch them, I watch their stance, and it's weak. Yes. Like 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 her legs aren't locked in. Like they're mm-hmm. just kind of. Kind of there, her hands are not like really, really locked in with absolutely ready to go fluid movement. They're just kind of hanging there. It just, it doesn't look, I don't know, it doesn't look buttoned up. And Sam Hughes, like you said, man, she is coming forward all mm-hmm. the time. Like she's going to come forward in round one and round three with the same amount of cardio. So I'm with you that Sam Hughes is absolutely the play. And I, I, I would not take this over no. two and a half. No. I watched Dudakova mm-hmm. get pretty gassed, and uh, if she could, she couldn't make weight against Gatto, or no, she did make weight, but had to pull out because she was she pulled like, on after she made weight. After <laughs> so, and she looked dead to the world, and we were just like, "How much money can we put on Melissa Gatto?" And that would have mm-hmm. been the cash of the century. So, uh, Sam Hughes at plus money is uh, is is going to be the play here. Well, I'll make no bones about it either. Dudakova striking is atrocious. It's are, terrible. <laughs> <laughs> what I've I've heard and been reading, doing my due diligence, people are forgetting how bad this girl's striking really is. And I don't think she's a bad fighter. She's a great grappler. She's young. She's got to learn. But her striking and Sam striking, I do not think are on the same level. If this ends up on the feet, she is going to get just volumed <laughs> for 10 minutes from the second round to the decision by Sam. Gurum Kutataladze and Jordan uh, Vucenic, who's coming, I think it's Vucenic, uh, coming in short notice. Um, I want nothing to do with betting this one. Do you have any? any... Agreed. Okay. On to the next one. <laughs> okay. Well, let, let's, let's just give, give, let's give our thoughts here a little so, bit. Uh, yeah, just your thoughts on uh, both these guys here. Jim. Look, I, I think this is a pretty much a, a good setup spot for Garam, but I don't think he's very trustworthy. And maybe because we got burned in the third round, I refuse to put my money on fighters that I cannot trust to do the right thing. I just can't. Uh, losing to Elvis Brenner, there's no shame in that, okay? He's a good fighter. We'll get to him later on. Um, but I don't know, man. Is it like is he all flash and no go? He looks like he should be a monster. And in round one, he is a monster. But then it just seems like the fights get way closer than they should be. It, it, he has a chance to pull away and never does. So it would not shock me if he lets this short-notice guy work his way back into the fight. Live betting could be very interesting in this fight. Um, But I'm not really jazzed about it. I'm looking forward to watching it. I don't think this guy Jordan is really UFC caliber, but uh, we've seen these guys in short-notice replacements fare well and then fall off a cliff in their second fight. So I'm this just has red flags all over it for me. Total pass. I go back to this fight against Gamera. To this day, I will say this is one of the best UFC fights I've watched in like four or five years. And you watch that fight, and you're going, this Garam is... This guy Mm -hmm. is a champion. Like, he's going to be fighting for the... And then, like, he doesn't fight until 2022, (laughs) and he loses. This Magulov, and he loses to Brenner, and that was a terrible loss because he was gassed in the third round. Garam, you're supposed to be the one that has the better cardio than Brenner. Like, it wasn't the knockout. It was that he was tired. Mm-hmm. And so here's my question to you, Jim. 
What has he been doing since this Gamrot fight? How do you put on a display like he did against Gamrot and look like an uh, just uh, like he looked like one of the best? This is a guy. This is a guy that with his grapple, even though he's like not really a finisher. I even think Dana White would say this fight was awesome. <laughs> and oh yeah, it was action packed <laughs> from Delta Bell. Great and, fight. I can't trust him either. I don't know what he's been doing. They, I, this grappling thing, he loses arm lock and right. I don't, I don't know. Um, I looked at this uh, Jordan Rusinic, and you're right. He's Is he UFC caliber? You're like, eh, if he's fighting a contender series guy or a guy yeah. at the bottom of the – he's not He's not in Grom's league if Grom's fighting at his peak. But that's probably – I don't know what Grom's doing. So, um, yeah, Vucinic, I'm not high on at all. I would actually like him to win and uh, get a great matchup in the next one so we can fade him. I don't think his striking is very good. He's fought absolute chumps, absolute mm-hmm. nobodies, and their fights are not very impressive. So we move on. I, I There's no play. There's no pick. There's no, absolutely no, no pick. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> in this one. <laughs> so. Let's stop talking about before we figure something out to bet. Let's absolutely. Just so, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, if you guys want to join the Discord channel, uh, we got a bunch of free plays in there. It's free to join. Uh, I'll put that link there in the description. Uh, yeah. Really, really good time with the Olympics. We've had some really good plays in there. And if you just want to join in and go over a bunch of plays, get some uh, opinions from myself, from Jim, from Corbin as well about some of the different uh, sports. It's free. Go ahead and join there. And if you guys could, just hit the like button for us. We're building this channel up. And uh, any like that we get, any comment that we get is much, much appreciated. This is a very difficult card to bet on, but we think we got some good spots. Uh, We do our due diligence, spend a lot of time on the research. So just a little token of appreciation, a like and a comment uh, would be great here. All right, let's get into Stontail Maze Fight Week. Jim, uh, <laughs> versus yeah, Sh- Sh- <laughs> Sh- Shamil Gaziev. I there's uh, I I want to get your take on on this one. I I just tell you right now, I can't believe over two and a half is plus money. I this is that that one's blowing my mind. I'm not really sure. I, Gaziev to me is the only guy that can finish in this fight, but plus money. Uh, that that's uh, that that has my attention. But what's your take on this one? Well, that's a real good point. I mean, to me, you're only getting finishing equity out of one fighter. So yeah. <laughs> to get plus money on that over two and a half, you, what you're only thing you're really worried about is Shamil in round one. Uh, I think after that, like most heavyweight fights nowadays, it goes into energy conservation mode. Uh, we just saw Mick Parkin get a first round knockout, which we did not see coming. But make no bones about it, if that fight started round two, it was going the distance. And <laughs> it. it... It was a great finish, great look by Parkin, but he hit him in the ear. It was just, just one of those, like, yeah. knock the equilibrium. It wasn't like a, oh, he's building up for the finish. Mm-hmm. And, the, like, it was a, it, you know, it's kind of one of those random shots where it hits him in the ear, but if it hits him a little bit, like, off. Uh, so I know what you're saying here. Uh, continue. It just, it, it's not tell Mays, man. The man's got these chicken legs. Uh, Shamil has all the wrestling upside that there possibly could be in this fight. If if he ends up on top, I don't think Mays is going anywhere. And you brought up a great point a minute ago with Dudakova saying how her legs are just not underneath her. Dante Mays fights the same way. He still does. He got the absolute gift of fighting Andre Arlovsky. Was losing that fight handily <laughs> going into that round and just catches old man Arlovsky right on the chin. <laughs> Kyle Machado, we saw slow, lumbering heavyweight. For what uh, Shamil looks like, he moves like he's 100 pounds less when he has gas. He is very explosive. So the total has me a little bit paused, but I really like a bounce back here for Shamil. Um, That fight against Rosenstruck, it just was what it was. Again, fight starts round two. It's going the distance. It's heavyweight. Um, I thought Rosenstrike kind of veteraned him a little bit. Uh, I think that's going to be a good learning lesson as well, uh, as far as cardio goes and managing your cardio. He looked pretty good early and then just fell apart. So I think we see an improved performance from Shamil here. And again, any chance I can fade Dante Mays, I'll take it. I will yeah. gladly take it. Yeah, we were all over uh, Gaziev in uh, Contender Series. That was one of our 
more confident plays and mm -hmm. he does what he does uh takes velasco down gets the check velasco's like can we get greg up. a fight can we get, can we petition for that can, please hashtag, need another money hashtag get greg a fight <laughs> Trending now. Greg Velasco's <laughs> awful. Uh, that's the joke. Uh, uh, I, he looked great against Martin Boudet. I didn't see that striking yeah. coming. I mean, he tore Martin Boudet apart. And then th this is what a random fight. Like, oh, hey, thanks for your UFC debut. Oh, by the way, now you're in a five rounder against mm -hmm. Rosen. Very strange, right? It, the whole thing was weird. And what was crazy was he did look good early. Mm -hmm. um, I I, re I remembered that I remembered that he he quit. After round four, but what I didn't remember was it was because he said he couldn't see out couldn't of his see. eye. Yeah, he, it yeah. wasn't like oh, I'm just like completely mauled and destroyed. He couldn't stop the jab from Rosen strike, mm -hmm. but he had success early, like you said. Like it wasn't like don't get me wrong, Rosen strike was on his way to win, but it wasn't like one of these like the doctor stopped it because mm -hmm. Gaziev was completely you know beat up. Gaziev was exhausted, but he's not he's not ready for a five round fight. That wasn't no it wasn't in the deck of cards. Um, I'm and with that's you. a smart move. Stop it. If you can't see, people give fighters shit all the time. If you can't see, you can't fight. Okay. Yeah, that's a so great way to would, take three years you off your back? career. Exactly. <laughs> So, so you can eat an overhand from Rosenstrike that you don't see coming and need reconstructive surgery? Like, no, you can't see, you can't fight. It's over. Um, so, yeah, smart lesson. I think that's a smart move, to be honest with you. So, Can we also label we, – we need, we need, I think we need the thank you fight. We need to label these thank you fight. This is a thank you fight. Gaziev saves the main event, mm -hmm. decides to go five rounds, accepts True. the five rounds. And so, like, like the UFC is like – here, Here you here's Dante Mays, and Gazi was like, "Thank you." Yeah. So this is to me, this comes across like a thank like you that. fight I like of that. Uh, like, like, hey, you know, we, you know, you got, you get our back, we get, we, you know, we scratch yours. So it's Gazi, but again, if the, and and I will say this about Dante Mays, like, he's he's a grinder, you know, like like Machado goes to decision, Nascimento goes to decision, mm -hmm. he gets the win against Orlovsky. Goes to the season against Sakai. Uh, goes, remember, how much money did we lose on Roy did up Hamdi? Oh, that, that motherfucker, man. Yep. That, that an absolute piece of shit. I can't shit. wait for Dontel to get cut so we never have to talk about this moment. That, again. that, that, that was really the sucked. one Roy did up was like, how does Hamdi have this much <laughs> energy? Oh, he's taking cattle yeah. steroids. Yep. Uh, but again, like, so Maze is, Durable, but again, that's the best thing you can say about him. And when, whenever we like, yeah, that's the best we thing you can like say about it. Yeah. yeah, we know we know what we're doing. All right, we're gonna go with uh, Muhammad Yaya and Kai uh, Fernandez. And so, Jim, I've told you that um, I'm, I'm I let you go first on these um, predictions, so I can type in the time code. I'm going first. Muhammad Yaya is <laughs> awful, awful. Oh, you took my breakdown. He is <laughs> <laughs> he is terrible, absolutely mm -hmm. awful. And we called this coming into his fight against Trevor Peak. I went back and watched, and I was like, "Man, is he terrible!" Like he, his stance is way worse than mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Dude than Dudakovas. Yeah. Like he, his arms are just like kind of like he looks like the the air. Uh, the fan that blows the inflatable Wacky guy outside of car, yeah, yeah, car dealerships. Yeah, yeah. That's how he's like, he kind of stands with his arms there. <laughs> like this guy sucks. He is so bad. Um, no upside whatsoever. I will give him this. He's got cardio. Um, he can last, uh, he can take a punch, but he, he comes out of fighting these absolute no name losers out from Taxi UAW. <laughs> I mean, absolute garbage. And, <laughs> <laughs> but Trevor Peak works him, which is a terrible because that Trevor Peak doesn't work anybody. That I was threw a, a soft descent with Trevor Peak. <laughs> that was a horrible, horrible look. Now on the other side we got um, Fernandez, who I don't know if he's that great. Uh, Mark D. Casey took him down at will, uh, but that that was kind of what Mark D. Casey does. I was surprised that it was a split decision. I, I, I thought DK had controlled big chunks of it, but if if you're if you're telling me that Fernandez's big weakness is his takedown defense against Mark D. Casey, 
then I love him against uh, Muhammad Yaya because Yaya ain't taking him down and controlling mm-hmm. him like that. I will tell you that this over one and a half at minus 154, yes, please. Absolutely, yes, please. Too bad Muhammad fighters. Yaya mm-hmm. ain't finishing Kai Fernandez, but I kind of like the durability of Yaya. It's just Yaya's mm-hmm. offense is absolutely non-existent, but he can survive. Um, I'm not going to lay minus 375 on, her, on, on, on Fernandez, but the over, I will absolutely take. Uh, what's your take on this one? I like the look. I like the look. Um, I think if this fight ends, it's going to have to be by submission. Uh, from Fernandez, uh, yeah. Yaya has zero grappling to speak of whatsoever. <laughs> he's like, terrible, Jim. He's a turtle. He's, he's a turtle terrible. It's bad. It's really bad. Like, I, I honestly believe that if either me or you were on top of him, he would not have a good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the Kiefer, the Kiefer Crosby yeah, submission exactly. defense. Kiefer Crosby could out wrestle this guy for 15 minutes, no problem. Um, I just that's where I see the fight ending. It's a question of whether or not Fernandez is going to be able to get it there because we, like you said, he's got cardio. Yeah, yeah. Um, I get it on the over. I wonder if we just don't overthink it and just I, not that Kai Fernandez is that good, but look, uh, <laughs> it's about who you're fighting. So is this going to look like value at the end of the day when he just Yaya's tripping over his own feet in the center of the ring? He's so bad. He's that's so how it bad, gets Kai. Jim. Is that how it's going to get Kai to the ground and get the submission? Because uh, I think the submission is going to be there. It's going to be live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, maybe minus 375 ends up looking like a complete gift of, of how bad he is. I, I, don't, I do not know how, of all the fighters out there, this was the guy – that they selected to come in. Mm-hmm. Like you got to be kidding me that there weren't better fighters out there. He 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 truly is is uh not UFC caliber. Mm-hmm. So Alonzo Menafield and Ozma Mirzakhanov. I'm interested in your take on this one. We got an undefeated. What's your take on this fight? Oh, this is good. I'm interested in your take on this one too. I was waiting for you. I was hoping you go first. All right. Uh, Alonzo I'll go, Menafield. I'll go first. All right, go first. Go first. Yeah, I'll go first. I I I think Mirzakhanov is ripe to be beat. Mhm. I don't know if Menafield's the guy to do it, but Mirzakhanov is. Uh, it just this this minus two hundred five is laughable. It, it, it really like it, he may make it look like a bargain because it's Menafield, but I, I when you have a guy that's thirteen and zero, like I expect domination. Like I expect complete ass kickings, mm-hmm. and I'm sorry he just doesn't like. The Devin Clark, okay, you know, whatever. Like, the, the Tafan, he looked terrible against uh, Tafan. And against, you know, Dustin Jacoby, Jacoby was there with him, like, the whole fight. Um, he just, he's kind of this lumbering, you know, wrestler. He's got good striking. He's got pretty decent takedown. I just don't see the hype upside of a 13-0 and guy who's, like, minus 205 against a guy who's really durable, in Alonzo Menafield. I know what he did against Carlos Olberg, which was, was honestly, hindsight was probably the right play. Was like, you can't yeah. stand against Olberg. So what do you do? Just brush him and be just like, hey, yeah. hey, I'm going to get clipped early or I, you know, get the takedown, whatever. But, you know, this is Menafield that rocked Jacoby in the third round. Even though he was getting beat up, he, you know, he got there. Um, Jimmy Crute, whatever, those wins aren't aging great. I'm not saying that Alonzo Menafield is going to win. I'm just saying I'm so terrified about just going all in on Mirza Khanoff, who, when I look at him, I go, yeah, he's well-rounded, but, w- you know, what's he – is he – do you think he's going to be champion? I don't. Mm. Uh, like, is he even going to make a champion run? I don't. No. No. If he gets through Menafield, they're probably going to put him up against somebody that he's going to lose to. So I think he either loses against Menafield – or he loses, or he wins this one, and then he loses the next one. But either way, if you want to fade where's a con off, I think this is an undefeated fighter that's absolutely worth fading because I don't see how good he is, and you got to pay a premium price against somebody that I'm just not sold on on the eye test. What's your take? Love everything you said. I do not think Alonzo Menafield is the man to do it. Fair. That's the thing. So I think you hit the nail on the head. 
his next fight, if he wins, boy, is that the moment. There's the step up in competition that we've all been waiting for, and that's where we fade the 13-0 fighter. Now is not the time. Okay. Um, I think he squeaks this one out. Here's the thing with Menafield. I just can't trust the guy defensively, man. I, I just can't. Uh, the way in which he gets clipped is just so... <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> freshman. It's not even JV. Like, at this point, having this long of a career in MMA, how are you so bad defensively still? His hands are down when he throws his combinations. He keeps his head... He has this great head movement. And then it's like you just wait for him to stop moving and he stands there. He reminds me of like uh, one of the characters from Mike Tyson's Punch-Out where you just have to avoid the special moves. Then they just stand there and you can hit him. Perfect. Get your gold star that way. Um, I just I can't bet on him. I just can't. I can't. I think uh, he's over. At this point, he's been in the UFC long enough. He's taken the beatings. Um, I don't know if that chin's there anymore. I mean, that Olberg shot was a beautiful shot, but... It reminded me very much of Greg Hardy when he fought Tai Tuivasa. When he ran in, and it wasn't a hard shot, but it clipped him and just, doink, the eyes just go glassy, <laughs> and it's over. So uh, I could most certainly see Mirza Khanoff doing that. Um, I like this fight not to go the distance. I think that somebody, again, gets caught in this. If, if we're wrong, and Mirza Khanoff is ripe to be beat, and he can be, I think Menafield's going to catch him. Um, and Metafield most certainly can slip on a banana peel and get knocked out in round one. It's interesting, though. We, we say that, and then, all right, we go to light heavyweight. So you got, you know, where's the cut off of Metafield? All right, so if he wins, who's he fighting? Gooskoff? No way. I'm not betting Gooskoff. Anthony Smith? I'm not betting Anthony Smith. Goosecoff's still in the UFC. I know. I know, right? <laughs> Olberg's going to be way up the rankings when this number. Johnny Walker? I think I w- might actually take Johnny Walker. I, I don't want to trust the chance. I will absolutely take Roundtree. Yes, sir. Over. Mm-hmm. I, I would take Ozdemir over yes, him. Yes, sir. I would take uh, Kreloff over him. Uh, I, so I, his time's coming. He ain't going to mm-hmm. end. We, we say this all the time. He's not going to end his career undefeated. So we Correct. just got to pick our spots and, uh, and figure that one out. So. Um, just real quick, guys, want to share this with you. Uh, we always do disclosure on our, uh, on our record. Uh, this is all sports. So we posted the video that's on the winning in the shadows, YouTube channel. So full disclosure went 11 and six, we made one unit, uh, one unit. You're never going to be bragging about that. But what I am going to brag about is that we've, uh, been profitable five weeks in a row and Mm -hmm. that is something to be really, really proud of in this industry. So, um, the breakdown is here, and we have a 5% play of the week that is up. It's a cross-sport parlay. These just continue to be our bread and butter, 28 and 12. <laughs> beautiful. We, we, in our last 40, we've won 28 it's of them. It's a beautiful thing. It's, it, this, is, <laughs> this is the hidden gem of the market, and I get it. They don't seem exciting. Um, they're exciting when they win, but our favorite part about this is that they're off of everyone's radar, and they're not that popular. And that is right up our alley. That is the mm-hmm. entire crux of what winning in the shadows is. This is not, we're not trying to hit MLB money lines and run lines and nonsensical stuff like that. Uh, we're just going to take the money where it comes from. And it's been the cross sport parlay. So 5% play is up. Um, uh, we, 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 in this, in this chart here, Jim, it says one and O MMA. Yes. Yeah. That's, that was an, that was our <laughs> only MMA play. We had five other parlay pieces, and we hit every single one of them. We were mm-hmm. six and zero oh in our in our plays uh, in on the UFC card, so it was really good. And yeah, MMA PFL. was good this week. Felt MMA good. was yeah, and so we've got PFL this week. So Jim, if you want to just uh, kind of promote what we're going to have for PFL, great card. Not a ton of spots, but enough to do some real damage, right? Yeah, and I I love when we get a PFL card where we don't have a ton of spots. Like this, this is what we love to see is when we can most certainly just get our three plays in, our two plays in. We'll probably have three plays, maybe two. Um, but just have them be good, quality plays, get them done, get out of Dodge Friday, up some units, and get ready for UFC. So those will be coming out pretty soon. Um, I think we're waiting on a finish prop for one of them. Um, but PFL is going to be really good. We're in the playoffs now, so we don't need finishes. Uh, overs can be popular in the playoffs. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned. They're coming out really soon here. We're just finalizing them. 
Love it. Let's keep moving on here. Uh, let's take a look at ah, oh, this one, man. Barn burner. Can't wait for this one. Dana White's got to be really <laughs> excited about this one. Joel Alvarez and Els Brenner, what do you like in this one? Well, I'm going to preface all of this by saying I hope that Joel Alvarez makes it to the cage because that has been the question with him. He's pulled out of two fights. I was all over Joel Alvarez against Rembecki. And he came out looking like a striker in his last fight. And if he would have done that against Joel Alvarez, we could have got him at plus, I think it was two-something. Yeah. Oh, it was going to be gorgeous because uh, he was going to absolutely murder him on the feet. Uh, this is a different matchup, and I think Joel's in trouble. Oh, um, oh, he, I like he, this. I here's like the this. thing, man. <laughs> Joel's a great hammer. I don't know if he's a good nail. I don't know if he's a good nail. He accepts bottom so much because he's so dynamic with his submission game that I don't want to be on the bottom with Elvis Brenner on top of me. There's a couple of fighters you can get away with that with. I don't think Elvis Brenner is one of them. Um, is, is Elvis Brenner one of our fighting nerds, guys? Oh, uh, man. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, we, uh, no. All right, we'll have to look that up. Okay, if I'll, it I'll is, check that out. Boy. Ugh. Yeah, that, if it that is, answers our uh, question. All right, uh, I'm going to look it up right now. Keep talking. I, I think that Alvarez, his win condition is by finish. Um, and I don't think he's finishing Brenner. I just don't. I think Brenner can take it and get it back out to him. At some point, somebody's going to make a mistake in this fight. I expect this fight to be bloody. I expect there to be swollen eyes, split lips, uh, bruised legs that are lumpy and swollen. This is going to be an absolute bloodbath for as long as it lasts. So I would venture to say late round two, round one, early round two finish for Brenner. I think that Alvarez is going to look good early. And if Brenner can get past that first rush, I see him taking over against Joel. If he pulls guard and he spends time on top and can do that damage. Because, listen, it's a lot of weight to cut for Alvarez. I, his frame is a massive advantage in this weight class. But there is a such thing as being too big. And we saw that last week with Sam Patterson. Sam Patterson at this new weight class does look better. So I, I, I honestly would love Alvarez to just move up and wait and pack some more muscle onto this frame because I think he could be an absolute problem up a weight class. I just think he depletes himself so much to get down to lightweight. So um, give me Elvis Brenner. Give me Elvis Brenner to win this fight. I think a live bet is going to be beautiful because I expect Alvarez to look good early. Uh, not to go the distance is the only way I'll play this one. I leaned Alvarez just because of the ground. Like, if it gets on the ground, it's over. I, I, I just, I, that's how much yeah. I believe in Alvarez's game okay. plan. I, I just looked it up. Uh, he is not with fighting nerds. So, okay. Um, so, yeah. I mean, yeah, you look at Alvarez. <laughs> yeah, you look at Alvarez. Like, finish, 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 mm. finish, finish. Like, he's just a finishing machine. And so is Brenner, man. Brenner's got that. Man, does he have that death touch? Yeah. This fight against Oral Bio, I went back and watched. Oh my God, is that terrifying? If you're if you're an Els Brenner better, or if you're an Els Brenner like camp, you're like, holy shit, this guy Orbeil took us down, and we had nothing. We mm -hmm. had absolutely nothing. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. Going well, or if Oral Bio is able to to dominate him on the ground. You know, surely Alvarez uh, can, but Alvarez seems to take the road. You know, what, what's what's the phrase? The, the road less traveled or whatever. He it, like he's not the guy that's going to take Brenner down within twenty seconds. He's no. going to be the guy that's going to yeah. try and stand and strike and prove a point, and then he's going to end up. <laughs> he does everything the hard way. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, he does it the hard way. The hard, the hard yeah, way. yeah, yeah. You can never take the easy path. That's my concern with Alvarez. But I, I think on the ground, Alvarez has such a big advantage that at some point he gets the win. I would take Alvarez inside the distance. Alvarez is a guy where there's no need to bet on him money line. You just no, bet on him, no. like, finish. So um, we could go. That would be a fun little head-to-head -head, uh, we can go to. But I think we both agree it ain't going the distance. I don't think it's going the distance, no. If Alvarez wins, it's going to be early. I, I really want to see weigh-ins. For this one, this is the one I have bullseyed and circled. Okay. I want to see what Joel Alvarez looks at weigh-ins. I want to see what Brenner looks at weigh-ins when they face off. I want to see where their mental state is. If Joel Alvarez has that cocky, 
Just, <laughs> I'm, I'm just, oh, you don't want to be like that against Elvis Brenner. Mm-hmm. He's going to make it difficult. He's going to make it hard. If you think you're in for an easy night against this guy, you're in trouble because you're wrong. He doesn't make any night easy. Mackenzie Dern, Lupe Godinez. Men in their late teens and early 20s will be tuning in mm-hmm. for this one. However, as grown men that are betters, how are we breaking down this fight, Jim? I was very ready to bet Loopy in this fight. And one of our goofy little but profitable It's theories, not goofy. It's, it's Just like, pop right up. Yeah. Mackenzie Dern has got two full sleeve tattoos and a <sighs> tattoo up to her knee. Tattoo, Tattoo theory. theory is in full effect. Full effect. Uh, she looks good. <laughs> and I don't mean looks good. I mean, she always looks good. But uh, that's something, man. When you're, when you're feeling yourself and you're getting those tattoos and life is good for her now, I just don't think that Loopy is going to make this fight easy for herself. Yet again, we're talking about fight IQ. Talk about, um, make, talk about making fights hard on yourself just she, she does everything the hard way her and joel alvarez should get together <laughs> i mean they, they would have the most stubborn kid on the planet uh do everything the hard way <laughs> i <laughs> wish <laughs> joel alvarez. yeah hell of an mma <laughs> fighter but he do everything the hard way um, uh, like truth. is she is she really dumb enough to wrestle with Dern? yes she I, is of right course the she answer is. instantly is yes if she keeps it on the feet I got to be honest with you. I think Dern is going to have the more impactful striking. We've seen McKenzie throw with power. And in today's MMA, the way the judging goes, we've seen it week after week where one shot with 10 seconds left that's a clean one wins you a round. Then McKenzie's going to throw with power. Um, I haven't bet this yet. I really wanted to fade McKenzie Dern because I just don't know where her head's at at this point in her career. But we never know where Loopy's head's at. So to me, this fight has a ton of question marks to it. One thing I do like, fight to go the distance. Amen, brother. Okay? Amen. When uh, Mackenzie Dern, for all these black belt credentials, when is the last time Mackenzie submitted anybody? I mean, she's known as this, you know, submission. You got to go back to 2021 against Nina Nunez, and then and look that who, was after a baby. Let's yeah, not forget and, and that then was a baby. Look career. who else we're, we're we're going random. Marcos and Hannah Hannah Cyphers. I mean, two like, ladies that jump into submissions. Throughout <laughs> <their entire laughs> prefer to get submitted. <laughs> yes, yes. Other it, than that, she hasn't even been close, man. She hasn't no. even been, she hasn't had anything locked up where you're worried about it. She rolls for heel hooks and ankles and never gets them. Uh, Loopy never been submitted, I believe. No, you're not submitting. She's not submitting right. Loopy unless there's something completely random, like loses, Split. you know, decision yeah, against uh, yeah. Jan Roba, decision against Angela Hill, you know, Carolina. So yeah, yeah I mean, just Loopy's depending. never been finished. So yeah. I mean, I don't think Dern's the one to do it. If Loopy could not get submitted by Jan Roba after what we just saw her do to Lemos, great call. I don't think Dern, I really don't think Dern's the one to do it. So, I mean, give me this over two and a half. Her fight goes the distance. As a parlay piece, it's one of my favorite bets on a card. Uh, I don't care who wins. Give me the over. Uh, yeah. You covered everything. Um, Loopy's done this weird thing where she was a wrestler. Now she's a striker. Fine. She's athletic. Um, and Mackenzie Dern, I got to say, I, <laughs> she got her ass kicked against Man Flamos mm-hmm. <laughs> as a way. Loopy's, Loopy's not that good of a striker. so um, She doesn't yeah. have the same power. No. Like, no. Mackenzie will walk through her shots. Absolutely. So, yeah. uh, good wrestling, grappling match. Should be fun to watch. Uh, good energy. Neither of them are going to gas. That's kind of the other thing that I like about this. Round three should be uh, pretty good. So, um, all right, we move on. The, uh, the Alex Pereira effect is in effect as well. Uh, there's been Mackenzie training with Pereira. Lately, okay. all these fighters that are doing time with Pereira have looked pretty damn good. Okay. Can't hurt. Can't hurt trading with the champ. It can't you know? hurt. You're right. You're yeah. right. So, um, all right. Uh, God. Uh, hey Jim, real quick, uh, quit wrestling with your. Uh, oh, sorry. Mike, think you're fine. Um, I don't. I. I. Uh, uh, Tony Ferguson, Michael Chiesa. I. This fight kind of just hurts me as a human being. <laughs> I no. I. I don't like what. I don't like what we're doing with Tony Ferguson. This is sad. This isn't. This isn't like a game anymore. 
This is Tony Ferguson, mm-hmm. who is just a CTE um, victim at this point. I I don't think it's I don't think it's right to keep putting him in these fights, even even though they're going up against Michael Chiesa. And <laughs> as crazy as this sounds, I actually hope that Michael Chiesa like kind of has it has it in him to not do that much damage to Ferguson, even if Chiesa has that in him. I don't know if Chiesa's got that power. Um, to me, this is a completely sad fight. And to be honest, as a human being, I don't want to bet this fight. And by the way, value, you're not laying minus 650 on Michael Hell Chiesa. No. Chiesa. So um, I just, I'm, I'm done betting on Tony Ferguson fights. I just don't, uh, um, I don't see the value in it. I don't, I, the, the, I, unders, I think, might be popular. Maybe this might be the uh, parlay buster. Would it surprise you at all if Chase sees that Ferguson's all, like, f- fucked up? And he's like, yeah, I'm not going to put it on this guy. We'll just wrestle and try and take him on. I don't know. I, my, my take on this fight is it's sad. I don't want to see Tony Ferguson fight anymore. Uh, his, I just, I, I don't, I, everything about this fight sucks. What's your take? <laughs> The soft spot that Andy has for Tony Ferguson. And I get it. I get it. It's hard to watch. It is hard to watch. Um, Tony. I, I think that TS is going to finish him. There. Oh, we're losing Andy. <laughs> You're breaking up there, brother. <laughs> I'm going to keep going just to keep the video going. We'll see Go. if we get Andy back here. So... I think that this is going to end by submission. There he is. The physicality advantage for Kiesa is going to be massive because Tony does not have any more physicality. His knees are gone. His brain is gone. gone His arms gone. are gone. Like, it's just everything the is skill gone. is not the problem. He's very skilled. But his physical body is broken. It was broken when he was in his prime, and he had the ability to fight through it. And at this point, those knees are gone. We always talk about the knee slide in the cage when he's warming up. Now it's just sad. <laughs> it's it's not... Everything about it's sad. It's just sad. This fight stinks. Something smells. I almost feel like this is the UFC saying to Kiesa, listen, take him down and submit him. We don't want him to get any CTE but we need him to lose so we can send him down the road. I don't know why they just don't let him play I, I, They cut but Mikhaev, who is undefeated, and smells. they keep sending this guy out. I know. That's this what I mean, man. Something stinks sad. here. It's, it is. Something stinks. stinks. Like, I, I, I could see a round one submission for, for Kiesa. He just gets on top of him and submits him. I mean, that's it. I do not think Kiesa is going to knock him out. I don't think he. that's his game or... Anything that he's interested in doing. So, you know what would be pretty interesting? Here's a, here's a, here's a good if what, is if Kiesa missed weight on purpose so the fight got canceled? <laughs> fight so we... ends by submission. When Kiesa loses, he loses by sub. <laughs> Fergus, that's not, he's not submitting. I'm telling you, man, it's that's not, how he loses. Not, I'd be yeah. interested in Kiesa by sub. Fight ends in sub. Fight doesn't go the distance. Um, but something stinks about this fight, and I will most certainly be waiting till I have all the information that I need to see to make a bet on this fight. Am I betting minus 600 at Kiesa? Not a snowball's chance in hell. Yeah. It's got to um, be some kind of a prop. I go back to this Justin Cagey fight where Ferguson took the beating of all beatings. There's and never after, been a worse one. At, like, And after that one, we were like, all right, well, mm-hmm. you know, there's no way that they can keep putting him you know, in these fights. <laughs> oh no, we're going to put him against yep. Charles Oliveira and Dariush and Chandler. <laughs> and I, and oh, Nate Diaz. Oh, we'll let him get his ass kicked by Bobby Green and Patty Piblet too. It's disgusting. It's who, absolutely who he disgusting. supposed to fight again? What's when he that? ended up fighting Nate. Remember he ended up, who's he supposed to fight when they switched the fights around? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Jing Lee Lee he was gonna was Lee it? was gonna murder him. Oh it, my it god, it was gonna be terrible. So, listen, I like I hey, they're professional athletes. You guys know I will bet money. If we have an advantage, I will bet money on it. But this is just getting mm-hmm. disgusting uh, with it. No, so whatever, 
All right. Marlon Vera, Davidson, Figueredo. Um, I don't think they have... Yeah, of course, DraftKings does this. I'll make my side quick. I don't care who wins. This thing is going over. Mm-hmm. Start round two is my best parlay piece of the Love card. It. Maybe start round three. Vera always starts off slow. Fig has been starting off slow um, with this new uh, weight division. Vera's going to have the big, you know, kind of – he's going to be bigger. And these guys are just going to feel each other out. And I actually think this could end up being one of the more boring fights mm. on the card, sadly. Um, so I don't care who wins. I'm just going to take this thing to start round two and put it in parlays. What do you think? Marlon Vera at plus money. That's okay. where I am. That's where I'm at. Here's the reason why. He's going to be huge compared to Fig. Huge. You're not. You're not. You're not wrong. About it. Fig has Massive. moved up and not looked big. He <laughs> hasn't had to fight this yet. He hasn't. He's moved up to this weight class, and they've thrown him guys that do not dwarf him. <laughs> this is the problem. Okay. <laughs> now he's fighting a legit guy at this weight class. And I don't think this is going to go very well for Pig. This is Marlon Vera money line or Marlon Vera by decision. I don't see the finish coming uh, unless Fig really just calls it quits in there. And, and says, he, you know he, what? He I'm won't. done. He's not. He won't do that. Who knows? No. Uh, I don't see him finishing Vera because apparently nobody can finish Marlon Vera. Nope. I mean, the, the knee from hell that didn't put him down is still... <laughs> baffling modern science <laughs> yeah right the fact that cheeto didn't even get a cut from that knee is amazing um <laughs> yeah what's your skin made of like like he's just unbreakable um i think the leg kicks of cheeto vera are going to be a problem for fig in this fight the size difference the amount of torque that he can put in those kicks are going to be an issue so if you're going to give me plus money on the guy who's supposed to be in this weight class who's just coming off fighting for the title whether you think that fight was justified or not it's still a title fight. And I don't see Fig beating Vera and going up to fight O'Malley. I don't think that's a good career move. You know, so uh, I just don't see Fig getting there. And we've seen these weight jumps. How many times do these guys move weight classes and actually make it to the title? I mean, if he beats Marlon Vera, does he fight for a title? I, yeah, you would, you, you you hard would to argue against to, it, right? What, 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 what weight class is this technically now? Is it Feather? Uh, all right, so, so so hold on. Let's see. Let's we can take a quick look at the at the at the rankings here. Um, I would also say that we've had a good read on Fig since he moved up in the division. We, have. we yes, sir. We were like, oh, we love him against Font. Oh, we love him against uh against uh uh Garbrandt. So mm-hmm. yeah. So uh, what is Eighty percent of the bets are on Fig. That's he, absolutely people ludicrous. love him, man. It's absolutely ludicrous. People absolutely love him. Wow. Mm-hmm. I'm on Vera, man. I'm on Vera. I haven't bet it yet. I think more people are going to come in on Fig. Okay. So I would be curious to see if this line's going to get steeper. And honestly, I think you might even get a better line on Marlon after round one. But R- Marlon Vera will win round three. Okay. Let's just get that out of the way already, right there. Yeah. Okay. He will win round three. It's going to come down to round two. This is going to be interesting in these uh, rankings if Fig does win because Vera, I mean, Vera, you, get, you just got to plummet down the ranking because he's fought everybody and nobody wants mm-hmm. to see that, you know, this fight. So if Fig somehow wins, yeah, you're going to get a really good, like, I don't know, depending on what happens. You got Jan, you got, you know, Rob, yeah. Corey, O'Malley. Like, there's going to be fights that decide – you know, who loses in some of these, and that's probably who Fig gets if he wins. So um, that's an interesting <laughs> interesting fight. All right, moving on to the co-main. Uh, Shara Magomedov and Michael Olsejcik. We have... Nailed it. <laughs> nailed every single Olsejcik fight going nailed back it. to the Dustin Jacoby. So we hit that one. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and O oh, predict. Pre- uh, predicting Michael Olkasechek fights, and that is all documented. And when you have a good read on on these fighters, man, like you just write it out. This one's a little bit tougher. This is not as cut and dry as like you were all over Holland to finish him. Uh, mm-hmm. We were over Pereira um, to finish him. We questioned uh, Chitty's like stand and bang, was, and sure yeah. enough, he gets you know. Uh, Baralo takes him down. He's got Olkasechek has absolutely no. 
<laughs> no takedown, no, ground, grappling, yes. no <laughs> grappling whatsoever. We did expect him to beat Brunage. Alvy was a gift, and then we thought he would lose in the kickbox against Jacoby. I don't know, man. I don't think this is cut and dry. I like Shara to beat him. Eh, I don't know if I get to the window. What do you think? It's a tough one. Again, we're so good on him. Why tempt fate? You know, it's like your yeah, law of averages states you're bound to lose. So yeah. I feel I feel like we're doomed either way on this fight, no matter what we pick. Um, regression is real, folks. Um, Shara should win. Here's the thing, though. I don't see the big wrestling from Shara. It's my exact is that take. Safe to say, right? Like, That's my exact. If you worry if you told me he was going to wrestle, yeah, I'm good. We're we're on him. Um, I don't like the number. I just this is kind of a tailor made opponent for Oleg Zaychek. Uh Shara's gonna throw a lot of kicks. And one thing about Oleg Zaychek is he has fantastic body work. Fantastic body work. So I'm real curious with this fight, man. This is getting a lot of hype, a lot of build up, dropped into the co main event spot in Abu Dhabi. Okay. Like everybody's gonna be on Shara by finish. And it would not shock me to see this end up being... I know Oleg Zaychek is an underfighter. But I don't know if Shara is this big, massive killer that everybody is building him up to be. I worry about the fact that he's in movies now as well. I don't like that. I never have liked that. If I hear you're in a movie and you're a pro fighter, nah, I'm, I'm kind of done, man. So I think this could be a tricky one here. No bet for me on Oleg Zaychek. Yeah. It's a no bet for me. Yeah. I don't like the numbers on anything. Um, if anything, I would actually take the over one and a half because I think on the feet. That's sneaky. I think Shara I think Shara uses those. W- when you say kicks, I think most people think head kicks or leg kicks. Shara no. uses these like front kicks like to the gut that mm-hmm. like really creates distance. And he uses like 12 of them around. Yeah. Um, so he, fights he, like, he fights like Michelle Waterson. That's who he kicks like, but effective like stabbing kicks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but but he wins, um, <laughs> and so I I actually think Magomedov can do a good job of keeping the distance with Olukasay. Like I said, Olukasay check his big Achilles heel is that that takedown, mm-hmm. but I'm with you. I don't think Shar is that guy, you know, to get him down and submit him quick. Uh, that being said, it's just kind of a stay away. No reason to no reason no. to to force the issue. On this one, so all right, we're gonna do the main event, and then we're gonna do our parley buster and our woulda, coulda, shoulda. All right, Corey Sanhagen and Umar Nurma Gamedov, and I just have this theory that if I get Corey Sanhagen at plus two forty five against any man on the planet in his weight mm-hmm. division, I'm taking it. I don't know if it's gonna win, but this line is it's stupid, batshit crazy, mm-hmm. absolutely ridiculous. What's your take on this one? I agree. It's batshit crazy. Corey Sanhagen's uh, top three in the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't he, he the really number is. one ranked guy <laughs> fighting the number 10. Okay, this is what? Two and three. This is ranked I, two and three, I believe. <laughs> um, either way, they're both top five. Look, you're paying the Nirmaga men of tax on this. The This is the equivalent of Rocky going to Russia to fight the Russian. <laughs> the I'm whole just... <laughs> deck is stacked against Corey Sanhagen. <laughs> okay. Is he going to win a decision? It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. <laughs> the whole crowd is going to be on Nurmagomedov. It's just the whole world is against them. There's a lot of money in this arena that I'm sure are donating quite nicely to the UFC, <laughs> and they all want Nurmagomedov to win. Um, unfortunately, in professional sports nowadays, this needs to be talked about. Um, Corey is probably one of my top five favorite fighters to watch. I think he's unbelievable. I love him. Uh, I just love him. him. He's so tactical and smart and just active. His activity is, it's so refreshing to see a fighter who's just active for five rounds. Um, Knows how to change up a game plan mid-fight. All of this. If Nurmagomedov cannot wrestle him for five rounds, he is going to be in trouble. And what I wonder... Is did Zumor fall in love with his hands a little bit? Has he fallen in love with those hands after getting that knockout? I don't I, know, man. 
I think this number's stupid on San Hagen. Okay, so <laughs> if I were to just tell you that this is a fighter's last four wins, Brian Kelleher, Nate Manis, Ronnie mm-hmm. Barcelos, and Begzat Almakan, would would you believe that that is the elite title? Crazy, right? Okay, so be, okay, Bexat Alkama. All right, listen, he it was short notice, saved the fight. Whatever. It was short enough, and yeah. he knows Nurmagomedov. Those guys like mm-hmm. know each other. They, that whatever. was the under that we as soon as we found out they were friends. And we, that was they're, the they're friends. We were, we're like, like over, yep. over. <laughs> um, okay, so he knocks out old man Barcelos and Nate Manis, who's not with the company anymore. Uh, Brian Kelleher. Okay, so that's one fighter. Or I can get a fighter whose last three fights have been against Rob Font, Marlon Vera, Yadong Song, Peter Yan, Roy It Up, Dillashaw, yes. Frankie <laughs> Edgar. Like, so whose level of competition has been mm-hmm. better? It's not even close. No, there is not. no, there is no contest in, in as far as who's got the better competition. San Hagen, San Hagen has been up against the best. And I love San Hagen striking. I think it's creative. I think, it, I think his strikes come from nowhere. And as much as Umar can practice and get ready against, you know, Al Makan and Barcelos and Manis and Gallagher, San Hagen is lights, light, lights you better. Oh, yeah. With these guys. Um, I know that San Hagen's last fight against Font was really boring. Like, San Hagen got hurt, hurt his shoulder, so he's like, I'm taking Font down, and I'm just going to win by decision. Like, I'm sorry. Like, Rob Font sucks on the ground. I get it. But, like, to me, that just shows San Hagen's just a baller. He's a gamer. Like, he hurts Mm -hmm. his shoulder, and he just goes out and is like, ah, I'm just going to take this guy down and win. I'm not sure Umar has the big wrestling advantage that everyone thinks he is. And I damn sure know that he doesn't have the minus 300 price tag of it. I, I the only no. way the only way you're betting this fight uh money line is San Hagen. You you cannot lay minus three oh five. Like mm-hmm. like how many people laid that juice against Leon you know, or, or laid laid the juice on Leon last week yep. and it just like it wasn't even competitive. So um I, I I love betting on Corey San Hagen. I will tell you this, I love this fight to go the distance. I agree. Yeah, th- agree that's that, that's yeah. the play in this one. You're 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 just under minus two hundred on three and a half. But listen, once this fight gets a third round, no, nobody's finishing. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be they're gonna be sweaty. Like it's gonna be impossible to get those submissions. And these guys have cardio for days. So if there's gonna be finish, it's gonna be early. So there's no reason to lay this minus one ninety five over three and a half. Take it to go to decision. I think it kind of. It's not gonna be as like Leon Edwards, Blah Muhammad esque, but I think it's even enough on the ground where it just kind of gets this strategic who's going to win the scorecards, you know, type of thing. So we're on we're on the same page there. Yeah, there's uh, a lot of lot lot on the line in this fight. Yeah. yeah, you can't you can't screw around. Like if if Corey's up two rounds, he feels he's up two rounds. He's going to try to bank that third round and play it safe. Absolutely, like, absolutely. He's not dumb enough to screw it up. <laughs> All right, let's do the Parley Buster in the woulda, coulda, shoulda. Hmm, there's some good Parley pieces here this week. Some of them are going to – you. yeah, you were you were so right on uh, uh, Christian Leroy Duncan on uh, last week. I was on Arnold, Arnold Allen as the Parley Buster. Lost the first round, but got there. So, all right, who's going to blow everyone's parlays? What's the play that everybody's going to put in? That is just going to, like, absolutely screw the pooch. Who you so, got? Again, we we're thinking about parlays, so we have to look at numbers, right? We have to look at numbers, and these are, these are plays that we think a lot of people are going to put in their parlays. These aren't just willy-nilly, like, out of nowhere pieces. So what do we think everyone's going to put in that's just going to kind of... Kind of shit the bed here a little bit. I'll uh, I'll put my money where my mouth is, and I'll put my seven and zero record on the line. Here. <laughs> I'm going to go Shara <laughs> Magomedov to drop the ball, and uh, and lose to Oleg Zaychek. It's a good in a one. weird decision. <laughs> it's a, a good weird, one. Weird, weird decision. Oh man, that's a good one. Uh, who do I think that everyone is going to put in their parlays? That's just going to totally 
fuck everyone well, over. Every, everybody's going to do the Magomedov, Nurmagomedov parlay. You're right. That's, yeah, you're that's, right. That's the public you're right. parlay. You're right. I, that's the drunk guy at the bar watching <laughs> UFC, what do I bet, parlay. That's the one. Yeah, five in the afternoon, our time. <laughs> um, okay. I'll go Umar. No, we're going oh, back. okay. Yeah, he's, he's not fighting it. a chop. He's, he's not fighting a last oh, second or a great. place, but he's fighting Corey fucking Sandhagen. Uh, this is great. Yeah. Minus three oh five. Oh, do, do, seventeen and oh, yeah. Do, do, well, it's gonna be a wash. Okay, fine. Uh, so yeah, Umar is gonna be the the parlay buster for me. So we these are fight. These are plays we got to go out on a limb. Yep. And 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 take something a little bit different. So, all right, woulda, coulda, shoulda. These are the plays <laughs> we had Mick Park in last week. Yep. All he did was hit Bresky one time in the ear, and that thing was over. Uh, woulda, coulda, shoulda. So this is the play. At the end of the night, we're all just sitting there going, God, why didn't we just lay the absolute farm on this play? So, Jim, what do you think? I am going to pick the absolute worst fighter on this card, and it's not even a question. I am going to say it's going to be uh, Fernandez. (laughs) (laughs) I think he's got the worst fighter on this entire card. Mackenzie Dern could beat this man. Ruby (laughs) Venus could beat this man. So I will take the worst fighter on the card to get absolutely dog walked uh, by a guy who's not that good either. So we're going to look back and say, God, the Fernandez, whatever other your favorite bet was, parlay was no Why didn't we fade? Mm -hmm. Yeah, why why didn't we fade that one? Um, I'll go with Cedric Dumas. Uh, Ah, Like like, like we're sitting there just going, really? Dennis Dennis (laughs) Dennis Tallulah is... This is no joke. He has one win in the UFC. It's against Jamie Jamie Pickett. Pickett. (laughs) Otherwise, he's gotten finished (laughs) by Kisria, Bart, Rodriguez, and Duncan. And uh, and we're getting uh, and he's he's old, and we're getting a young athletic guy who's by all like listen, he's not great, but uh, he's better. So I think we might. I think the first fight of the night, like when Cedric Dumas is getting his hand raised, like yeah, Dumas by. Uh, round two submission. Uh, that could be it. So, uh, all right, guys. Thanks very much for joining us. Uh, this is a, there's a lot of fights. Um, looks like it's going to be starting around 12 o'clock noon, uh, Eastern time. So, uh, not really sure we're going to have a live show just to be honest uh, with everybody. So, uh, the times have changed on, on, on this card. So not sure we're going to make it, but we will let everyone know, join the discord. That link is in the description. Um, and also, don't be uh, don't be a don't be a stranger in the Discord. Like, let's get some good discussion going. You know, we got some great free plays and some absolutely hilarious looks. Uh, the Olympic plays that got put up today in in uh, beach volleyball, all of them hit in in Discord. So shout out! To, I shout love out watching to, this Discord just roll. Oh, it's great, man! They, like yeah. like. There's people that follow some of these sports that you and I have no idea um, Mm -hmm. about. So uh, join the Discord channel, grab that 5% play. Good luck on your plays, and we will see everyone on the next video winning in the shadows. Bye. Good. Good luck, guys.